Can we talk about, because obviously this podcast is all about movement and uncovering truths and um, um, core stability, um, core stability training. I know, I know. I feel the same way, but I had to bring it up with you because I know that you have some, some views on it. Um, is there such a thing? Can you train your core? Let's ask that. Can you train your core? Uh, if you can find your core, um, then by all means, you know, take it out, put it on a leash, <laughs> take it to the park, throw a ball for it. Um, and I'm sure you and your core will be very happy. <laughs> but, you know, people will be shouting, it's saying, but I've been told my core is my pelvic floor, my transverse abdominus. They're all, that's what we're told, that we've got this core group of muscles that we need to train. Yeah. Uh, well, you can't. Um, so transverse abdominus, for example, you don't know whether it's being contracted or not. You can't feel your transverse abdominus. You don't even know if you've got one or where those muscle fibers are going to be. So the idea that you contract or train one group of muscles over and over something else, um, A, suggests that, that the muscles themselves are trainable in, in isolation, and B, that they are contributing something to something else, uh, greater than something else, which, which is, you know, unlikely. Um, and uh, and see that, that you know somehow um, that there is one group which can be defined as one thing rather than another. Yeah. So the whole thing is biologically implausible, um, potentially dangerous. And and by all means, you know you want to have a prolapsed vagina when you give birth, then go go ahead and contract your abs as, long, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, um, yeah. I think it's um, I think it's I think it's um, it's silly. It's mythical. Um, it's potentially dangerous. It's pointless. Um, and and it, and it it kind of perpetuates this idea of, of individual structures or individual muscles being functioning yeah. um, in isolation away from anything else. Well, it's just not the case. Um, it, and um, so um, so yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's not it's not helpful. I mean, there are some things. Yeah, okay, whatever. You turn a blind eye to. Do you want to get a six pack and do your sit ups or do then then fine. I don't have a problem with you having tone to your body, but tone doesn't come from uh, a specific group of muscles. And, and the potential is for you to then overwork those or or try and think that you're preventing injury. You know, contract your core in order to lift this up. Well, that's that, you know again all the evidence is telling us that that's going to do the opposite for us. Yeah. So the evidence doesn't support. Uh, the idea, if you like, and, and, I, and I get where the ideas come from, and I get where it's, you know, where we have within our society this yeah. obsession on that. But it's something that um, is just, and just look up them, look up A.L. Edmonds, the, the myth oh, yeah, before. Absolutely. I just find uh, it so yeah. frustrating that it still persists. You know, physios still tell people you have to do core stability work and, and to pull in your tummy and to pull in your pelvic floor, and then they're in pain. Because obviously you're binding everything down with tension. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. why it's still persisting. I find it very frustrating. Oh, you know, there's lots of things that persist. You know, the, the 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 idea of you know stretching for better performance still persists in, yeah. in tending to be in our in amateur sports and stuff like that. Um, but you know, this this there's still this myth that you have to you know have to stretch before you do your exercise or what have you, and um, and it's you know, or you have to contract your core. There's, there's there's a lot of myths that have been put about by um, primarily um, a fitness industry um, yeah. with rapidly trained people who are poorly trained over a very short period of time to generate large amounts of income for those people doing trainers and to to accommodate the, the explosion of, of gyms over the last you know 15 mm -hmm. to 20 years um, and and you know with all due respect with Pilates studio as well there's some there's some you know when when the whole body control thing hit the back end of you know the the 90s early 2000s it was awful you know i i filled my clinic on on church halls for 15 mainly women who were going up going on and being given pilates exercises that were absolutely destroying them and you know that whole core thing was part of it